our today's topic is directional test. That means our objective of today's experiment is we will determine the shear strength parameter by directional test. Before going to the details of the test, I want to discuss about the shear stress of soil first. There are two types of stress. One is normal stress and another one is shear stress. When we talk about the load coming from the superstructure, that is normal stress and we often denote it by sigma. And whenever there is a sliding or one part of the soil is, try, is trying to move away from the other part of the soil, then that is shear stress of soil which is generally denoted by tau. If uh, one part of the soil is trying to move from the other part of the soil, then there will be some resistance from the soil. So the shear strength of a soil mass is the internal resistance per unit area that the soil mass can offer to resist failure and sliding along any plane inside it. We can visualize this phenomena by a block and surface analogy also. Uh, suppose there is a one block over a surface and you are giving particle load from top of that um, block and you are trying to move that block by uh, giving some horizontal force. If you apply more load from the particle direction, then you will need more um, load from the horizontal direction to move that block. The same thing happened for the soil also. Here you can see one example of shear failure in soil uh, which occurs uh, due to the inadequacy of the shear strength of the soil. In case of embankment, due to slope, one part of the soil will try to move away from the other part of the soil. And another example is stiff footing. In that case, the soil beneath the footing will try to move away uh, due to the particle load coming to it. And soil generally fails in shear because before crashing, the soil will fail by sliding. And at failure, a shear stress along the failure surface reaches the shear strength. Why we need to know about the shear strength of a soil? Because if we want to analyze the soil stability problems such as bearing capacity of a foundation soil or slope stability of an existing or new slope, or the lateral earth pressure on earth retaining structures or pavement, we need to know about the shear strength of that soil. That's why shear strength parameters are so important to us. If we talk about the soil, it is not a single block. There are many particles in a soil samples and there will be interaction between the soil particle. Uh, if the a failure has to be occurred, then the bonding between these particles has to be overcome. And for case of coarse grain soil like sandy soil, the bonding is basically from the friction between the particles. And the inter internal friction angle for the coarse grain soil is higher, uh, which is the measure of the shear strength of the soil due to friction. And for fine grain soils, there is some attraction between the particles of the soil samples, which we call as cohesion. And cohesion is a measure of the force that the cement particles of the soil. These are the two ways that contribute in the shear strength of a soil. One is angle of internal friction and another one is cohesion. We generally term these two as the shear strength parameters. The angle of internal friction value for sandy soil will be higher and the cohesion for fine grain soil like clay soil will be higher than that of the sandy soil. If we talk about the purely cohesive soil, then it will not have any angle of internal friction value. All the shear strength will come from the cohesion of the soil and if we talk about the cohesionless soil like dry sand with no cementation, it, its shear strength parameter will come from its angle of internal friction value. So it will not have any cohesion. For other cases, uh, for other C5 soil, they will have some cohesion value and some angle of internal friction. 
more coulomb failure criteria states that a material fails because of a critical combination of a normal stress and shear stress and not from their either maximum normal or shear stress alone and the relationship between the normal stress and shear stress is given as s equal to c plus sigma tan phi where s is the shear strength and sigma is the normal stress and c is cohesion and phi is angle of internal friction if you look at this relationship you can find that it is the equation of a straight line so if we want to plot the mohr coulomb failure line it will be a straight line and as we know for non cohesive soil there will be no cohesion so the mohr coulomb failure line will pass through the origin and for purely cohesive soils such as saturated plastic clays there will be no angle of internal friction value so the mohr coulomb failure line will be horizontal and for other cases that is a general case for c5 soil and the mohr coulomb failure line will be a straight line which which will have some c value and uh, some angle of internal friction value also so if we look at the failure line we can determine the c and phi value See, this is the c value and this angle is the phi the main objective of our today's test is to determine these two shear strength parameters and tau f is the maximum shear stress the soil can take without failure under normal stress of sigma for a given normal stress if the shear stress is within these strengths then soil soil will be stable and it will not fail but the shear stress crosses this red line and um, remain in this area that means their soil sample will fail because the shear stress of their soil sample crosses the failure stress there are several laboratory tests for determination of shear strength parameters like direction test triaxial test and and so on today we will talk about the direction test and you will get idea about triaxial shear test later direction test is quick and inexpensive but the shortcoming is that in this test the soil sample will fail on a designated plane which may not be the weakest plane direction test can be used to determine the shear strength of both cohesive and non -co non cohesive soil and we will follow the ASTM standard D3080. The test equipment consists of a metal box in which the soil sample is placed and the box is split horizontally in two parts. Vertical force is applied through a metal plate and shear force is applied by moving one half of the box relative to the other half of the box. That means one part one part of the box will remain constant and we will move the other part of the soil by applying shear force and soil will fail in this plane this is a schematic diagram of a direct shear test apparatus the test will be conducted in two phases first we will apply the normal load to consolidate the soil sample when the two consecutive part, particle dial reading will be same then we can assume that the soil has become consolidated then we will apply the shear force to that soil sample and we will uh, measure the displacement through a dial indicator of a lateral displacement a direction test can be conducted in for both disturbed and undisturbed sample and we can we can uh, control the loading rate if the load is applied slowly that means the soil sample will get enough time to dissipate its pore water pressure and the soil sample will become drained and direction test is the most suitable for consolidated drain test especially on granular soils or stiff clays 
Now we will see how to prepare the specimen of for direct shear test. Here are the components of a shear box. These are the porous plates and these are the two parts of the shear box. First we will join these two parts, then we will put one porous plate and then we will uh, put our soil samples there. Here uh, we are showing the test for a disturbed samples, sand samples. If we have any desired density then we can compare the soil samples to that density. After putting the soil sample we will label the top surface of the specimen. Then we will put another porous plate and then we will put the pressure plate. Thus the specimen preparation will be completed. Then we will uh, put the shear box to the direct shear test apparatus. Then uh, we will uh, put the particle load through pressure plate. After when the consolidation phase has been completed then we will apply the shear force. Then lower box is subjected to the horizontal displacement at a constant rate and upper part of the box will remain constant. And we will measure uh, the shear force by probing rain. This is the image of actual direct shear test apparatus. This is the shear box where we will put our soil samples. This is a loading frame to apply particle load. We will apply the particle load for consolidating the soil samples. Then we will apply the shear force. And we will measure the particle displacement through a dial gauze. And we will also measure the horizon, horizontal displacement. And by proving ring, we will measure the shear force also. So uh, basically from a direct shear test, we will get the data for shear force and horizontal displacement. Now we have the data. We have all the data for shear force and horizontal displacement also. From force, now we need to calculate the stress. As you know, uh, previously we can uh, calculate the stress from force by dividing it with the cross-sectional area. So normal stress will be equal to normal force divided by area of the cross-section of the sample and shear stress will be uh, the shear resistance developed at the sliding surface divided by area of the cross-section of the soil samples. Now how to determine the shear strength parameter of C and phi? We have the data for shear force and horizontal displacement. So we can uh, plot the curve for shear stress versus shear displacement. The curve will be like this. Uh, for a given normal stress, we have completed the test and we have drawn the curve for shear stress versus shear displacement. From this curve, we can determine the maximum shear stress. So for a given normal stress, now we know the maximum shear stress. So uh, for shear stress versus normal stress uh, graph, we have one point. And we need to repeat this test for at least three times. That means we will do the same test for different normal stress. Suppose for uh, normal stress sigma 2, we have conducted the test and we draw another line. From that line we can also determine the maximum shear stress. So for normal stress sigma 2 we know the maximum shear stress. That means we have another point for our shear stress versus normal stress curve. And for normal stress sigma 3 we can draw another curve and we will have another point. Now uh, from shear stress versus normal stress graph by joining these three lines we can draw our molecular failure envelope. If uh, this is a purely cohesionless soil um, or um, that means uh, sandy soil it will not have any cohesion value so we can measure the angle 
of that line which will be our angle of internal friction. That is the procedure for Dirichlet test and we have uh, some other laboratory uh, test on the specimen that we can do for our uh, to determine the resistance parameters like Dirichlet test, traction test and there are uh, several methods also like torsional ring shear test, plane strain triaxial test, laboratory pain shear test, laboratory fall cone test also. And we have some other field test methods also like pain shear test, torfin, pocket paintometer, fall cone, pressure meter, static cone paintometer, standard penetration uh, test also. So many tests. Depending on the on our expected test results and the existing soil condition we will choose which uh, test we will do for determining our shear strain parameters. Here is some video links uh, for direct shear test. You can watch these two videos then you will have more clear idea about the direct shear test. After conducting the direct shear test we will have a data sheet like this. Uh, here the direct shear test has been conducted for four different normal stress. Uh, suppose for 25 kilopascal normal stress we have the horizontal displacement and shear stress value. Uh, so we can plot the curve for stress versus horizontal displacement. You can plot the curve for four normal load in one graph. Then you can determine the maximum shear stress for a for a given normal stress. Then you have to draw the normal shear stress versus normal stress graph and you need to plot the mole coulomb failure line and find your shear strain parameters and you have to report uh, that shear strain parameter that means you have to plot two uh, two graphs one is for uh, shear stress versus horizontal displacement and another one is for normal stress uh, shear stress versus normal stress and that's all for today thank you